What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and welcome back to another LEGO Overwatch set merch review. Today, we've got the biggest of the first wave Overwatch sets, which is Watchpoint Gibraltar. This is an awesome set, and let's get right on into it by first taking a look at the minifigures. First up, we have Farah, and she is a very, very cool minifigure. Probably my second favorite out of the entire set. As we can see, she has her iconic blue armor, even with the wing pieces on the back, which of course can be adjusted a bit, so you can put them up for when she's doing her ultimate, or down for when she's just normally flying. She has the helmet as well, and a little rocket launcher, which I will show you how that works in just a second. The helmet itself does, of course, come right off. And there you can get a close-up of her face. She has two faces, one neutral, the other aggressive, if you want to have her angry in combat. And yeah, just pop that back on. I am a little disappointed they didn't come with a separate hair piece for her to wear when she has her helmet off, since in-game you regularly see her without her helmet, so it makes sense for her to have a hair piece as well, but they didn't include that. Oh well. As for the rocket launcher, though... This is a sort of like stud shooter, so set it up like that, press the button, and fire the rocket. And you do get these little rocket pieces. You actually comes with three of these, and you can just pop that right back on and fire it again if you want. A very cool minifigure, I have to say. I love the design of the armor, which, speaking of which, let me show you what it looks like underneath. So this is far as printing on the torso without the armor and the helmet, and there's the back. Very cool looking printing for a very cool minifigure all around. The next minifigure we have is Mercy. Now this is going to probably be a very popular one for people to get, and overall looks pretty good with the one sort of blatant issue being her face, which maybe you can't tell that easily on the camera here. But what they did is they have a black headpiece, and they printed the face on top of that. However, when you print on the color black, when it comes to like plastics like this, it doesn't always match up what it's supposed to. On the right, you can see Tracer, who does not come in this set, with the normal flesh-colored head. And Mercy's face looks a bit off. I've seen this in LEGO sets before, and it's... It's kind of disappointing that they haven't really fixed this yet, because this has been an issue for like, I think a couple years now with different sets. And yeah, that's a little disappointing. She does have a alternate face, which has the exact same issue, again, looking a bit more angry. But it is what it is, rather disappointing. It's really just a quality control issue, since, I mean, it shouldn't be coming out like that. But... Yeah, if you really wanted, you could just swap it out with, like, another, like, female flesh-colored face from a different set, and it would probably look fine. I mean, Mercy has a pretty generic face to begin with, but, yeah, you can do that if you want. As for the rest of the minifigure, though, it is actually very, very cool. We do have another nice torso printing right there. She does have her Caduceus staff, which makes a nice use of a hook piece on the end. And, of course, the big wings on the back, and she does have a new hairpiece with the halo sort of built into it. And there she is without her wings. You can see the back printing there. Really, the only issue is the face, which, you know, is just a disappointing quality control issue. And next up, we have Reaper. Now, Reaper is the only bad guy who comes in this set. There's three good guys, one bad guy. Not exactly balanced, but, eh, whatever. He, of course, has his dark cloak with the big ol' shotguns, which initially when I was looking at the images of these LEGO sets before they were released, I didn't like how the weapons for some of them looked, but now that I have them, like, in hand, I think they're actually pretty decent. So let me just give you a close-up of one of these shotguns. It is brick-built. Get to focus. There we go. And it has only, like, a one stud barrel on the front when the actual shotguns have two barrels but yeah it looks good enough and of course both shotguns in the set are the exact same but reaper himself let's get a close-up without the shotguns in the way 
You can see he's got an ominous face under that cloak with the torso nicely printed once again. And removing his cloak and hood, we can see that he as well has very good printing. All the Overwatch LEGOs minifigures have really nice printing. Honestly, I think the minifigures are the best part of these sets. They're just so great, and they're great little collector items too if you're just into Overwatch and not so much into LEGO. The Reaper does come actually with one extra piece, which is a bit interesting. It comes with this sort of wraith form piece, which you can just pop his legs off and then pop on this. And then he can do his Wraith form, which Reaper does actually come in the Dorado set as well. He's the only minifigure that comes in more than one Lego set. However, he does not come with the Wraith form piece. So that is a nice little exclusive touch to this set. And last but not least, we have my favorite of the minifigures, the Big Fig Winston. He is a very, very bulky minifigure. Very, very cool. Comes with his jump pack and Tesla cannon. I'll show you that in just a second. As you can see, he's got his big arms, <laughs> which can move, they can rotate, they can hold things, which I'll show you in just a second. And yeah, it's nice printing detail. A bit simple, but I mean, it looks like Winston. You got his big jump pack, which can be taken off. And... Yeah, even this looks very accurate and very well detailed for such a simple little build. I love that. And we have Winston, who also comes with a little jar of peanut butter, which he can hold in his hand. It's a bit weird because you have to sort of <laughs> flip his hand upside down. You could have him hold it like that. So he's like upside down, like he's trying to shake out the last remnants of peanut butter from it or something. And he does also come with a banana, because he's got to stay healthy, even if he prefers peanut butter, and that can clip right into his hand. Now looking at the Tesla Cannon, this is a really cool build, again, where it's simple, but it looks accurate. The only inaccurate part, you can see like the electric bits in there, the only inaccurate part is like this pole sticking off the top, which is only there so we can actually hold it like that um and so when he's holding it it looks just fine but take it off looks a little odd but you can easily just slide that out if you want to just have it like sitting there as like a display piece so yeah once again really really cool this is by far my favorite minifigure out of all the sets i've built so far and he'll probably be my favorite overall because i'm a fan of winston and this is just such a cool big fig character and before i forget the set does also come with a small health pack it's the same one we've seen in other sets. Pretty generic, but a nice little accessory to have. Alright, now that we've covered the minifigures, let's move on to the main build itself. And due to how vertical this build is, I can't really get it all in frame. I'll show you an image of me having my camera flipped so you can see like its entire height. It's a very tall build, but fortunately we can take a look at the spaceship horizontally and let's check that out now. So here we go, the Gibraltar spaceship. Even when I'm holding it horizontally, he barely fits in my camera frame. That's how big it is. It's a very cool ship. Pretty accurate too to the one we see at the end of the Watchpoint Gibraltar map. Uh, the actual one doesn't have like the secondary cockpit, but I'll show you what that's all about in just a second. Let's get a close up. We do have the front cockpit on the top and you can of course fit a minifigure in there. The only minifigure that actually fits in it that comes with the set is Farah. I guess you could actually fit Reaper in there as well, but he's a bad guy, so he shouldn't be flying it. So you only really get Farah who can pilot it because Mercy's hair is too big and, well, Winston is too big, too big. <laughs> and going down along the side, we do have this big area, which I'll show you in just a second. These awesome boosters on the back. It's just such a cool spaceship overall, like... Anyone, if you're not a fan of Overwatch, this would be an awesome set just to get this cool spaceship. But uh, anyways, let's get to this part right here. Make sure you guys can see it. You just slide these to the side. Pop that up. And you get a little storage area in there. That can either be considered a cargo bay, possibly a mobile lab. 
It actually shows you in the instructions to put Winston's peanut butter, like, over there, along with his banana. And get that... Nah, banana can stay out for now. Um, and you do get these little green... Yeah, get my hand out of the way. These little green canisters on the left side, so those could be, like... I don't know, condiments. <laughs> I don't know what people put on their peanut butter and banana sandwiches in the future. The cargo space is, of course, big enough that you can actually fit Winston inside. Takes a bit of uh, adjusting. It's kind of laying down. You can kind of get them if you like put them forward. This guy's butt sticking out. Oh, not quite. All right, if you kind of lay him down like that, close that in, boop, there you go. Winston is safe and sound inside the cargo bay. And, of course, if you don't want to put Winston in there, there's plenty of space to fit several minifigures, which if you just want to, like, sit them there, like, pretend these are, like, seats or whatever, you can fit a ton of minifigures in there. So whether you're going to use this as, like, a dropship on a mission or... It's a research lab. They don't really define what it's supposed to be, and of course you don't actually see the inside of the ship in-game itself. So, yeah, it's kind of up to you, whatever you think works best for the spaceship. Now, one very interesting play feature they implemented here is the ship actually <laughs> disconnects. So, put that to the side. And here we have the front piece, which... They even have like a little like booster on the back to kind of justify how it can fly on its own. This is like an attack shuttle ship. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And also has this feature, a little like gun turret that pops up on the back. And that just perfectly is like flush with the rest of the ship. You don't even know it's there until whoop, pop it up and shoot at the baddies. That is very cool. I love that in terms of like playing around with it. Like if you're a kid, and you get this set, that's an awesome play feature to be able to split it up, have the attack ship. And then over here we have what you could call, I guess, the drop ship. It even has little blaster guns on the front there and the cockpit right there, which pop off. There's a little control in there and you can fit a minifigure. Once again, Farah and Reaper are the only ones who really fit from the set itself, since Mercy has her big hair and Winston is big old Winston. But yeah, there you go. You have two ships, technically. And I actually really like the design of this one. It looks like a drop ship of sorts. Imagine it just, like, flying in, dropping down, like, and then it opens up and people get out for, you know, the mission or research or whatever they're doing. Now, moving on to the launch pad itself and the sort of gantry tower. First, we'll start by taking a look at the launch pad base, which is, of course, the final control point. Well, I guess checkpoint for the payload on the map, and of course it has the sort of Watchpoint Gibraltar charging station there for the drone, which doesn't actually come in this set, that's a separate set which I have already reviewed, and I'll be showing you how that works in just a second. If we move up, we get the actual launch pad, where the boosters on the ship just sort of slide right into there. Let me get the ship around here. Right like that, and it just stands there on its own. Take it off on a mission. So moving over here, we get a lot of like little detailing with like these sort of like valves and pipes and everything. I love these sort of like little details like that that make it look very like industrial and in how it works. And now let's move our way up the tower. So once again, I have to get sort of like a fun camera angle here just because of how tall this thing is. As we can see, there's a lot of detailing there. I love the use of this sort of like red roller coaster track. I think that's like... I think that's the set it was initially used in. It's like a Lego roller coaster. But they used it to make a really cool sort of like gantry tower here. And turning it to the side, you can see you have like these fuel pods. Which I guess just hold fuel for when you're refueling it. And of course there's a little like hose here. Which I'll show you how that connects in just a second. Get a little satellite dish up at the top. And at the very absolute top, you get a little like walkway which goes to the ship itself so now let's land the shuttle and show you how this all works imagining this is somehow doing a vertical landing right there push it back you get the little fuel cell going in connecting it for refueling or just holding it in place whatever you want to consider it and of course the walkway goes down 
And if you want to have your pilot, whoever that might be, just sort of be up there and move across, then you can pop off, <laughs> barely see it, and they can sit in there. I'm not going to actually put her in because that would take a lot of finagling right now. But there you go. This is the Rocket Gantry for the Watchpoint Gibraltar set, and it's quite impressive. I don't think my camera can do justice capturing it, but the set itself looks so, so cool just displaying it. Anyways, I guess we should get to the final thoughts then and see what I have to say. Real quick, before I forget, I did just want to show you how the payload from the Tracer and Widowmaker set actually connects with the spaceship itself. So we have the spaceship and then we have the payload, which I did review in a different set already. And that goes right on top there. And you can kind of see it's got, there's no like specifics, like you could actually move it up just like a little bit if you wanted and kind of adjust its positioning. But anyways, then you have, let's try to get it all in frame, the super big ship, which can <laughs> fly out into space. And then once it's in orbit, returns to Earth, and the drone flies around on its own thing, recalling the Overwatch agents. So there you go, that's very cool. I love how these two go together like this. This is such a nice sort of crossover design, which we don't actually ever see the payload on the ship in-game, but that is its ultimate destination, so that's really awesome that they included it in there. And again, if you haven't seen my review of the Tracer and Widowmaker set that has the payload, you can check that out through the cards on screen. So overall, I have to say, this is actually a really, really cool set. It is the biggest set and thus is quite expensive. And given that there's only four minifigures, I was a bit worried that it wouldn't really live up to the price point. But the spaceship itself is just so cool and so well designed. Plus having the rocket gantry and pad down below just lets you build an entire sort of scene. Especially if you have the other Watchpoint Gibraltar set with the payload that lets you build a sort of complete map environment. I will still say that the misprint on Mercy's face is disappointing, but again, that's just a quality control issue. I do still think it could have stood to have a fifth minifigure. I think it actually would have been really awesome if we saw one of the Talon agents from the Overwatch Recall animated short. I mean, the Hanzo and Genji set comes with one of the random Yakuza goons who was in that animated short, so I think it would have been good to have a sort of fifth figure who was a bad guy, just default Talon agent to help out Reaper, because as is, Reaper is going to have a tough time against Pharmacy. So it's not really a fair fight here, and just because of the size of the set, I think a fifth minifigure would have been awesome. But nonetheless, I do have to say that this set is very good, and could quite possibly be my favorite overall. I haven't built all the sets just yet, so I'll have to wait and see later if that's how it turns out to be, but definitely a great set, and one that I would strongly recommend. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave your thoughts about the Watchpoint Gibraltar LEGO Overwatch set by leaving a comment down below. Do you think it's a cool set overall, and one that you're interested in getting, or is it one that you'd rather pass? Regardless, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit up the bell to never miss any of my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.